So let's consider this question dealing with topic 16.1. The following mechanism is proposed for a reaction. And you see these steps here. A plus B gives C and D. That is the slow step. And then C and D go on to react together to give you A and E. And that is the fast step. Notice something that you start off with A and you end up with A. Uh, that suggests that A does somehow take part in this slow or rate determining step, but at the end it's regenerated. So what that suggests is that A is a catalyst in this reaction. Looking at the slow step, which is the rate determining step, you notice that there are two entities, A plus B, interacting to allow that first step to happen. So, let's look at the question now. Classify substances B and D as reactant, product, catalyst, or intermediate. Now, substance A, I pointed out, is a catalyst. It's involved very much in making that slow step happen, but it's regenerated at the end of the completed reaction. Then you have D, which is produced at the end of the slow step, but then becomes an input in the second step. And D does not appear in reactants. It does not appear in products. D, therefore, is an intermediate. A is a catalyst. D is an intermediate. You're not asked about A, but just in case in another question at another time, please note that A is a catalyst. And B, of course, is a reactant, very much taking part in the slow or rate determining step to give you final products of A plus E. Now, in this part of the question, it says to deduce the rate expression. And this is where the issue arises. If in fact A is a catalyst, as we pointed out, does it have to be included in the rate expression? Well, if we think about it like this, when you don't have the catalyst, the rate is slow. When you put a tiny amount of catalyst, the rate increases. If you increase the amount of catalyst incrementally, then you notice that there is a relationship between changing the amount of catalyst and changing the rate of the reaction. So therefore, if the slow or rate determining step involves A plus B to give C plus D, then the rate law or the rate expression would be rate is equal to K a constant multiplied by the concentration of A, the catalyst, multiplied by the concentration of B, the reactant. And the third and final part of the question says, calculate the initial rate of reaction for experiment two, if measured under the same conditions as experiment one. Well, we've already determined the rate expression or the rate law as rate equals K multiplied by the concentration of A multiplied by the concentration of B. So using one, we can solve for k, which means 0.2 goes here, and another 0.2 goes here. And then we can solve for k because we're also given the rate of 1.2. So k will be equal to 1.2 divided by 0.04. And that would come to 30. So K would be equal to 30. No need to think about the units of K. What you have is a second order reaction uh, dependent upon two entities. Using this 30 now, we'll say that 30 must be equal to X, which we're trying to solve for, divided by 0.3 multiplied by 0.2, which is 0 0.06. And then 0 0.06 multiplied by 30 would be equal to 180. And that 180 would have the units moles 
for dm cubed per second.